Well, we're pleased to be joined now by Travis Fritz. He is a brewer and president and co-founder of Old Nation Brewing Company with us today on the Megacast. Travis, thanks for being with us. Hey man, thanks for having me. That was uh, that was a killer last segment. I was entranced, and I kind of hoped it would just go on and you bump me. That was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Chris is always a good interview. We appreciate having him on, and uh, love what he's doing and what the entire team is doing over there at the Detroit Jazz Festival. Tell us a little Absolutely. bit about Old Nation Brewing Company. What's your team doing over there? What's special about Old Nation Brewing Company that the community should know about? Sure. Uh, well, Old Nation Brewing Company is based here in Williamston, which is about uh, 55 minutes or so west, northwest of uh, of southeast Michigan, uh, kind of near Lansing. Um, and we are relatively new. We opened up in 2015, but I've been brewing professionally here in the state of Michigan for about 20 years. So um, <clears throat> we've got a relatively popular beer, uh, certainly nationwide and, and even internationally called M43. Um, that's our primary uh, brew, but we also do a lot of traditional beers that we uh, sort of grew up as brewers doing, and, and those are out in the market now. Oktoberfest is the one that we have now, which is a, a timely addition to our, to our stable of products. We're joined by Travis Fritz, brewer, president, and co-founder of Old Nation Brewing Company with us today on the Megacast. And, and, uh, and Travis, I know that the pub uh, is closed at, at at the moment because of the pandemic. Uh, what what went into the decision to close the pub, and uh, is there any plans in the future to reopen it? Yeah. Um, so you know, the, our our pub closed for the same reason everybody else did last March. Um, you know, we uh, we we chose to be safe. Ultimately, we're a production brewery, so you know, even in the best of times, about ninety percent, a little bit more than ninety percent of our revenue came from distribution of beer. The pub is a great way to kind of meet people and invite them into our house, as it were. But um, you know, it's a it's a it's a ton of effort. The margin isn't great, like it isn't most pubs. And and uh, even though we love it and the pub does really well, our decision was, you know, let's focus where um, where the company is most likely to survive. And ultimately, that was um, to close down. Um, we'd love to open now. It's uh, it's of course difficult to find staff, especially as remote as we are from population centers. So. Um, you know, my wife who runs the pub and myself, and my partner, Rick, just decided for now, we'll, we'll keep it closed. We've already sort of overlapped the, uh, the revenue that the pub made us with increased sales last year and this year on the open market. So for us, it's an easier decision than it is for a lot of folks who, who kind of rely centrally on their restaurant or pub, um, for their business. Uh, you know, for us, that, that wasn't the case before the pandemic and it isn't now. So as soon as we can open comfortably in a way that we feel like we'll be serving our guests. Uh, at the level we should, then we will, and until then, we'll we'll kind of stay shuttered. So, what about the market for your beer? Be, uh, have you found that over the course of the pandemic, the, the demand for these specialty beers and these and these craft brews has increased dramatically, or, or has it really stayed the same as it was before the pandemic? Sure. Well, it, it matters who you are. I mean, what what we've noticed as a brewery, that is, um, what we've noticed um, over the course of the pandemic is that folks are largely not everyone but you know as sort of an, uh, an average people who are interested in craft beer are sort of turning to brands that they know um so for example two hearted has done really well from bells and and founders kind of all day ipa and those sort of brands that have been around for a really long time have done well and we're lucky to have a couple of brands like that as well that did really uh, really well over the pandemic obviously you know with with bars opening up and shutting down that's a pretty big portion of any big brewery's business so that's been wild um but it seems like although people are willing to experiment and, and and try new beers the the direction that again folks on average are going is sort of towards stable brands that they that they already enjoy and and uh, like i said we're just lucky to have one of those we're joined by travis fritz he's the brewer president and co-founder of old nation brewing company with us today on the megacast and travis you mentioned that people are sticking with the brands that they that they know and that they appreciate and, and the beer that they enjoy the most as opposed to uh, going to more newer brands necessarily um, in opposition or uh, just to, to try something different what, what about your brand what about old nation brewing company and your beer do you believe or that you or do you know from feedback you've received from your customer base, what sets your beer apart from others in the industry, locally and in the region and nationally? Oh, uh, you know, I, everybody, there are a lot of brewers that make really great beer and we strive to do the same thing. 
Um, execution is key. Uh, like I said, we've been, this isn't a job I came into from being a lawyer or an engineer or anything. I've been a professional brewer since I was 21 years old um, and, and I'm 42 now. I started in, uh, in Berlin, uh, Germany at the university there, the Technical University of Berlin, and then was an apprentice. So for us, um, you know, it was a matter of taking 15 years to get really good at what we did and then opening a brewery and listening to what it was that people wanted and making that. That happened to be New England IPA a few years ago. Um, and that remains a really popular style. You know, what people say is, is, is you know, kind of all over the place. Everybody's got their own opinion. What we look to is uh, kind of firm data, like, for example, IRI data is what most um, brewers and, uh, and, and retailers look at in terms of how well a beer is performing. So, for example, uh, M43, our, our, our main New England IPA, is the number one New England IPA in the Midwest. Um, and in the top 15 uh, in the nation. Um, so I think what got us there was consistency and diligence and, 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 and kind of hard work in a number of different markets and executing those things that we learned over the first 15 years of our career in order to make the brand successful. I mean, there is in business no such thing as luck, uh, but you know, you can you kind of be at the place where um, practice and effort meets opportunity. And I think that's where we that's where we ended up. So we're we're happy to be as successful as we are, and and so thankful to everybody that uh, that 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 loves the beer. We're joined by Travis Fritz. He's the co-founder, president, and brewer at Old Nation Brewing Company. Joining us today on the MegaCast, and you can find more information about Old Nation Brewing Company at Old Nation Brewing. Dot com and uh, Travis, you did mention earlier that you have your new Oktoberfest beer that is out now. And and right, right around this time of the year, right around fall, you see a lot of, of brands, whether it be some of the bigger beer brands or more of the of the regional and statewide craft brands that put out their Oktoberfest uh, beer or, or something along those lines. Your roots learning the craft of brewing from in, in Germany does that help improve your Oktoberfest beer and make it a little more authentic, maybe than other than other other brands or uh, more unique in some way? Maybe. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, brewing is a trade like like any other trade, like being a carpenter or a plumber or, or anything. Um, and, uh, you know, the question of whether or not German plumbers are better than American plumbers is kind of moot. They generally know the same stuff if they're disciplined enough. So there are a lot of American breweries that are making really good, authentic Oktoberfests. There's a lot of debate about what that is, right? What is a good authentic Oktoberfest? Even in Germany, they've changed a lot in the last 40 years or so. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it's certainly having learned the trade in Germany helps us to make really authentic German beers um, or German style beers. It's about discipline, that kind of brewing. It's not about, you know, some kind of crazy thing that you put in the beer, um, which can kind of become a cheat uh, and, and not necessarily make a better product. Um, we think that when we make beers like this, we make them to appreciate the tradition, essentially, of brewing. And, and uh, I think it's that uh, motivation uh, that makes our, that sets our, our beers of that nature apart uh, more than, you know, any, any kind of particular experience that I've had. Um, so, you know, what we look for is a really drinkable beer that tastes like beer. It's clean um, and it's well brewed and attention has been paid through the entirety of the process. And again, that discipline is well known from Germans, but not unique to Germany at all. We're joined by Old Nation Brewing Company president, co-founder and brewer, Travis Fritz with us today on the Megacast. And Travis, of your current lineup, including your Oktoberfest beer, what are, what are your three favorites personally? Uh, and, and what would you recommend to, to people that are new to Old Nation Brewing Company beer if they're tasting your products for the first time? Sure. Um, well, as a representation of what we are capable of doing, I would definitely say uh, the M43 and its uh, kind of brother brand, the Boss Tweed, which is a little bit bigger, uh, more fleshed out version of the style at about 9% ABV would be great ones to test. Um, but understanding that, you know, we, you know, that those are loud beers, they're big flavors, big, just intense kind of beers. Um, and understanding that a brand like Oktoberfest and the lagers that we generally cycle through throughout the year also represent a more subtle but still just as valuable approach to brewing as well. So I think those three brands, M43, Boss Tweed, and this season Oktoberfest would show kind of the breadth of our ability to anybody interested in drinking our beers. And I hope prove to them that uh, anytime they see an Old Nation product, it's it's worth taking a shot at it. So Travis, where can people find your beer? Obviously, uh, you, you uh... Uh, they're not going to be able to get at at the pub for now because your pub is is closed. Uh, will they be able to get it by going 
to your brewing company in Williamston? Or can they get it online? How can people get Old Nation Brews? Well, luckily, we're easy to find. Um, you, certainly, if you're around Williamston for any particular reason, you can uh, stop by the pub. And we do still do curbside uh, with food, okay. which is great and homemade and also the beer. Um, but Meyer, Kroger, Spartan, D&W, which is also a Spartan store, Bushes, um, any, just about anywhere that sells craft beer, you can find M43 or Boss Tweed. There aren't many places left where you, where you can't find an, at least one Old Nation product. We're joined by Travis Fritz. He's the brewer, president, and co-founder of Old Nation Brewing Company. Uh, Travis, just another couple of minutes with you before we'll say goodbye today. Anything else coming up that would be interesting or important for our audience to know or things that people should be looking out for in the near future from Old Nation Brewing Company? Yeah, um, you know, we're continuing uh, our uh, sort of attack on traditional uh, styles and particularly German style beers. So um, we've named a beer after after my family, that's the Fritz Lager. That should be coming out in October. Um, it is as accurate and traditional a product as we can possibly make. So what we hope to bring is some uh, import uh, quality beer to Michigan. Um, and we're hoping that we raise our own level of, uh, of efficiency and kind of accuracy and discipline while we make this beer. And, and, and we're hoping that other brewers kind of follow suit as well. We think there's enough big, sweet, high alcohol beers out on the market and, and a return to uh, those disciplined traditional brewing techniques and beers would behoove everyone in the craft beer scene in Michigan right now. So Fritz Lager should be out in uh, 16 ounce four packs in October, any Kroger, any Spartan, uh, just about anywhere you can get beer. We encourage everyone to try it. Well, Travis, appreciate your time. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much, Tyler. It was great to be here.